Hi everyone. I hope you're feeling well. I hope you're staying safe during this time of COVID-19. Today, a little Wing Chun, a little martial arts, specifically Wing Chun. And specifically, I want to talk about the Wing Chun chain punch or Lin Wen Choi or Ching Chung Choi or straight blast or whatever you want to call it. Uh, there are three things that the general public tends to identify with Wing Chun. One is uh, the Mukyang Jong, which is pretty straightforward. It's not unique to Wing Chun, really, but uh, it has become identified as a Wing Chun thing. Um, then, of course, we have the uh, Bai Jong, Tan Sao Bai Jong, Jong Sao Bai Jong, okay? Tan Sao or, bong, or Jong Sao Bai Jong, ready stance. Pretty straightforward kind of thing. I would never use it in the street. You, you get into a stance like that, you're just asking for a fight. You're just saying, let's fight. And lastly, the chain punch. Now, I want to talk about the reality of the chain punch in application and also how Wing Chun actually views the chain punch. So let's look at the chain punch and let's look at that video again in slow motion. Why is that guy standing there taking those punches? Because he's an actor stunt man, and that's what the script told him to do. The reality is, if your first punch is successful, the individual isn't going to be there. They're going to move. You either moved them, or they're going to flinch, or they're going to cover. I mean, something's going to happen. Any of you who have sparred and tried using a chain punch knows that your second or third punches tend to be in the air or there's really no power behind them because the individual's falling away. It's wasted motion. On top of that, if you're really, really focused on it, you've kind of caught yourself into a pattern. And as the person moves out of the way or whatever, you're kind of stuck on a track and they can counter. I also kind of want to talk about or bring up there's a common practice of chain punching to the head or practicing the chain punch to the head which in my opinion and I think later on we'll kind of figure out is not necessarily smart these little bones against your jaw of jawbone or the bowling ball of a skull that's not a good match. That's not necessarily a good thing. I'm not saying never hit to the head. I'm just saying, generally speaking, punching a head is not smart. Fingers break. Hands get hurt. And if you hurt your hand in the middle of a fight, you've got a problem. You're operating at a deficit. So, from the practical like street level application you have this problem that the person is going to you you will have either moved them with the first punch or they're going to move or they're going to flinch or they're going to cover and the following punches are meaningless the idea of punching to the head is high risk let's look at what wing chun says about the chain punches if we look at the forms all the non-weapons forms. The uh, Silum Ta and we're talking about an Ip, Ip Man line here, so there are variations, other families, so things are a little different. But from an Ip Man line, um, Silum Tao, Chum Kip, Biu Zi, and the Mukyang Zhang. Silum Tao and Chum Kyu are the only two that have Lin Wei Choi, the chain punch. And interestingly enough, they both have them only at the end, at the end of each form, in kind of a ceremonial closing. Chain punch, 
Tan Hoon finish. Um, I want to point out these are not straight chain punches. They're a climbing ladder, solar plexus, sternum, throat. If your arm is out level with your shoulder, you're not punching a person in the head. You're punching them in the throat or collarbone area. So there are some who have suggested, I have in some of the research that I've found, that the th three forms that are generally used were once a longer s single form. And during the Red Boat Opera era, Wang Wabo and uh, Leung Yi Tai broke them up, or broke that form up, and gave us the forms that we have today. And if you think about it in those terms, then it starts to make some sense as to why Silam Tao and Chum Kil would end exactly the same way. It's almost like just putting a, a button, a, a, the end, at the end of a book. Book number one, one, two, three, the end. Book number two, one, two, three, the end. It, it's buttoning it up. It's interesting that when you think of it in those terms, um, Build Z does not end that way. It's also interesting to note there are no chain punches in the Mukyang Zhang. In fact, there's only one or two punches in the Mukyang Zhang at all. In the uh, Pak Sao set, where you punch low, solar plexus sternum area, solar plexus sternum area. There are no punches in the Mukyang Zhang over the show, over the arms. Over the arms would be the head. No punches. Same is true for the standing forms. There are no punches over the shoulder area, the head. There are strikes right off the bat. Move number two in the Mukyang Zhang. Zhang Wang Jern. Palm. To the jaw. Build Z form. Build Z, build Z, build Z. Wong Jern goes up to the jaw area. Uh, kind of follows the old martial art axiom soft against hard, hard against soft. So I find this interesting how people are fascinated with the chain punch, especially against the head. When Wing Chun, when you look at the forms, gen says generally it doesn't happen, that the, it's not done. It's not prevalent in Silam Tao. It is not prevalent in Chum Q. It is not prevalent in Build Z. It is not prevalent in the Muk Yang Zhang. So, something to think about. Something I wanted to put out there. You may disagree. Leave a comment. I hope you're doing well. I hope you have a great day. hope you have a great week. hope you're staying healthy. hope you continue training. Talk to you later. Bye.